Good morning, Grade 12. I am going to be recording this session at school, so I do apologize if there's any background noise. And if there's any, any voices that come over the intercom, I'll just quickly push pause and then carry on and resume. Okay, so chapter one, we're going to be looking at your environment. And in particular, we're looking in the retail space. Remember, in IB, you're going to be asked on all retail kind of stores, so you need application to that. Environmental scanning, they love asking about environmental scanning. And all it is is that you're scanning the various environments, which is your micro, macro, and market environments, in order to see if there are opportunities that management can then make decisions or, and, and make strategies for the year. So you always start off with looking at your vision and mission. Um, in any business, that's the first thing you need to look at. Whatever we're saying we are, are we doing what we say we're doing? And if we're not, you might have to look as a strategy to relook your vision. So look at your vision and your mission, and you're going to understand, are we doing what we say we're doing? And if we're not, this is what we're going to do. Once you've looked at your vision and mission, you're going to formulate a strategy. What is a strategy? It's a fancy word for the word, for a, an, a, a plan of action, for a plan. You're going to put a plan together in terms of um, discussing how you're going to achieve what you want to achieve. In any kind of step situation, you're always going to implement the strategy and you're going to evaluate and control. When I worked for Kimberly Clark, when we did evaluation and control, we would call it key learning outcomes, key learning perspectives. And that's what we would then do to um, look at what we've done and if it's working. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide, and that is looking in your microenvironment. Microenvironment is the business, so we're looking at checkers, at pick and pay. There are 10 businesses in any business, and you know that there are these 10 business functions. What are they? We did them in grade 10. It is production, procurement or purchasing, marketing, PR. HR, human resources, you're looking at administration, you're looking at general management, we're also looking at finance, and the other two that come into play in grade 12 is IT, which is information technology, and risk management. I say put a little star next to risk management because we do need to have a look at the risks that each of these functions pose, and that is in your textbook, the consumer textbook. There was a question about that about two years ago in an IEB paper, where Matrix had to identify the risks and then come up with strategies. Okay, so don't get confused with the word risk. Risks are challenges that any business has. So you then looking at your resources, okay, and your resources are financial resources, human resources, the building, the etc. Et policies, what policies do you have in play um, in your business? Different policies. Like at school, you've got hair policy and uniform policy. In businesses, you've also got dress code policies and all of that. Structure is how does the business, what's the reporting structure? Who do I report to? How does the business, that structure, tall structure, and then your culture. Each a company has a different culture. And it depends where you work and how they work, and you would then see if you can fit and adapt into that. So, now you are now looking at your business. So let's look at checkers, and let's do a SWOT analysis for checkers. And you would do this, I would suggest you would do this once a year, especially in the beginning of the year, just before you launch into your year. So understand what strategies and what plans we're going to be doing for that year. So, a strength for checkers could be brand. You know, it's got a strong brand heritage. Another strength could be that they are, um, their portfolio ensures that they are covering all the LSMs, living standards measure. Remember your LSMs, we talk about LSMs all the time. Another strength could be that they've got, um, they, you know, they've brought in that Simply Good, I think it's called Simply Good, and brand where they are offering better products where it's got less sugar and less things that are bad for you. So that could be a strength. The weakness for checkers could be the um, 
quality could be. It could, weakness could also possibly be staff friendliness. Um, another weakness could possibly be the stores. You know, the stores look and feel it's not, doesn't feel the same as other, like a Woolies, for example. So that could be a weakness. Remembering your weaknesses now become your opportunities. So an opportunity could be to do staff training, to do a staff wellness program, especially with the staff working during COVID. You know, I think the staff morale is definitely um, going to be affected. So we should be aiming at that. From the simply, um, from the weakness point of view, quality, we could look at suppliers. We could also look at bringing in total management procedures. Um, another opportunity could also be marketing or whatever, the, uh, whatever else you've said in your weakness. Great 12, your threats uh, is everything from pestle, everything that is uncontrollable. Do not put competitor in weakness. It's not a weakness. Remember, strengths and weaknesses are everything that you can do internally. Threat could be competitors. Inflation, COVID, load shedding, um, elections, anything that's got to do with that would be then your threat. You could be asked to do a SWOT analysis. They'll give you a retail store and you must know how to do that. Let's go to resource-based analysis. So first of all, we're going to understand there are five steps to resource-based analysis. What is this? It's a tool that managers use in order to see how they can be better. Okay, so all these tools are part of environmental scaling to see how can we be better, how can we add more value. So a resource-based analysis is looking at a resource gap. So for example, let's do pick and pay. Now checkers, just if I am always looking at your competitors, checkers has launched those new Fish X concept stores, which are targeted at your higher LSMs. So possibly a resource gap could be for pick and pay is that let us look at delis because that, that the checkers stores have delis apparently in there. So pick and pay could do the same and we say, you know what, we're going to have a bit more of a deli um, feel to our stores. That's a resource gap. The next question you're going to ask is, does this idea, does bringing Delis into Pick and Pay add value to my store. The third thing you're going to ask is, how can we edit it? How can we utilize it better than what our competitors are doing? So for example, if Pick and Pay is looking at the delis, they might say, you know what, we're going to take it one step further. We're going to do it as a community um, drive within our communities as a CSR program. We're going to actually offer training to people that want to be chefs. Those chefs will then work in our delis. Those delis can then also have workshops where they offer it to customers to say, come to our deli at seven o'clock at night, you pay a fee, and we're going to show you how to make Thai food, how to make sushi, how to make your own bread, whatever the case is. So pick and pay has decided we're going to take it one step. The fourth step is, is are we, would we have a competitive advantage? Will there be a return on our investment? And we're going to say, yes, there is going to be a return because our workshops are going to pay for themselves. And we're going to show customers by using pick and pay products how you're going to have these amazing meals. We could also do it online and charge online. Once you've gone through those four steps and you've said, yes, there's going to be a return, in business, normally you're going to be doing numbers. Now you're doing, you're actually going to be setting out objectives and um, finalizing the, the budgets to this and seeing whether you are actually going to be making money. You're then going to go into a strategy. Okay. You have an acronym. So you, you should have an acronym um, to, to understand and to remember the resource based analysis. So let's come up with an acronym. Let's use G, GAP. And let's call it grants. All the grants out there, give us away. Okay, so grants. Let's use the word value in our acronym. So grants, value. Let's use the word you, utilize better, or we can use the word competition. So let's go. Grants, values, carrots. Let's use the word advantage. And, and let's use the word strategy, S, strawberries. So every time you want to remember a resource-based analysis, you're going to remember grants, value, 
carrots and strawberries, because he does. He finds value in those vegetables. But remember, it's not the acronym, you must remember the words that go under that. Okay, right. Let's go into value chain analysis. Value chain analysis is exactly that. You're asking, how can I add value to my business? All these tools are about value and trying to be better. So how do you start a value chain analysis? The first thing you need to do is you need to look at your primary activities. So let's take checkers. What are the primary activities in checkers? The first one is definitely, I would say trolleys. Okay, that's a primary activity. As I go in, I need a trolley. A second primary activity, I think, would be stock or SKUs, S-K-U. And they, um, the acronym for that is, I'm hoping I can remember it, it's STAN, Stock Keeping Units. I'm going to confirm that with you. But you're going to talk about SKUs, S-K-U-S, SKUs. Okay, because that's what we talk about in retail. So you're going to look at your stock. Third primary activity in checkers, I think, would be your totals, your cashiers. Now we've identified our primary activities. Awesome. Let us now ask the question, how do I add value to this? So, for my trolleys, how can I add value to a trolley? I don't know. Let's go, let's make it auto, an automatic trolley. I have a sanitizing system inside the trolley. Because, I mean, it's COVID and that would be pretty relevant and pretty current. Let's have a trolley that as you put in an item, it's got um, artificial intelligence that can read the barcode and pop up information about the product that you've just bought and give you recipe ideas. What? I mean, that's next level. How are you adding value to trolleys at the moment? You're, you're kind of thinking out the box. From there, remember that first slide, you're going to then develop a strategy, implement your strategy, and evaluate your strategy. Okay. The second primary activity we said was stock or SKUs. Let's make sure that we've got total quality management. Let's make sure that we've got advertisers are trained, that they know how to stock the items. Let's ensure that we maybe have new suppliers. So that's how you're going to add that. The third primary activity was our cashiers or tills. Let's make sure that we've got the latest technology in tills, that customers don't have to wait. Um, you could even have a self-checkout system, you know, that you could look at doing. And that's how we The second step to your value chain analysis is to look at your secondary activity. Now, secondary activities are those activities that are not important. They're not not important. They're very important, but they're behind the scenes. So I always say to my students, uh, right there, marketing and human resources. And how can Marketing, well, we're going to do social media, we're going to do promotions, we're going to do niche marketing, which is customer relationship marketing. We're going to get a database and we're going to talk to customers directly. Or you can then look at your secondary activity, the um, HR, and that is training. And we can also bring in our staff wellness programs to ensure that our staff are being um, treated well. Let's have a look at your balance scorecard. So what I always say to, to them, again, it's a little acronym, little letters, and that is balance scorecards are fickle. They're not really fickle, they're actually very good, but we're going to call it fickle. The F stands for financial perspective, the I, internal perspective, the C, customer perspective, and the L, learning and growth perspective. So if we do a balance score, again, I'm just reiterating, it's manager, a management having a look at the business in the internal business and saying, we need to come up with strategies. We need to have a competitive advantage. So you use any one of these tools, SWOT, resource-based analysis, value chain analysis, or a balanced scorecard to gain a competitive advantage, to force you to, how can we be better? Okay, so from a finance point of view, you need to have a look at your financial perspective, the financial department within the business, and you're going to say, you can use the same words as we did with value, is how can we add value? So, checkers, we're looking at our financial department. We are going to put together a low-cost strategy. With, so we're going to ask our suppliers to have a look at their pricing. How much more do we need to buy in order to get economies of scale? And we're going to then put that in place. We're going to make sure that we have budgets for everything that we do. 
and that we are going to conform to the ratios, the industry ratios, the quick, uh, the asset test ratio, the current capital ratio, solvency ratio, profitability ratios. So you can name all of them, and all you're going to say is to ensure that we maintain the industry norm. I'm going to take you through those ratios in um, my next video. So that don't stress about that. For now, all you need to say is capital ratio, current capital ratio, asset test, solvency ratio, profitability ratio, and I'm going to maintain the industry norm with all those ratios. You'll get those marks. So internally, what could we do internally in checkers to ensure that we are adding value? So internally, I'm going to look at our equipment. I'm going to look at our trolleys. We're going to invest in a whole new range of that are easier to push, but it's better for the customers. That's got AIs in it that every time you buy a product, you are going to then let the, the trolley scan it and it will bring you a whole lot of product information. Awesome. From an equipment point of view, we're going to get a snazzy new, I want to say juicy, but snazzy new till system that's going to ensure that things are going to go quicker at the till system. Even your paying, you know, the payment method, we're going to ensure that you've got that latest technology that it's literally a tap and a go and you are sorted. The customer can leave immediately. So internally, we're going to look at our processes. We're going to put in total quality management. Any one of those things will be right. But just remember, you're looking in the business, customer perspective. Now we're looking at our customers. How can we add value to our customers? We're going to put together a customer relationship marketing plan. We're going to put a loyalty program together. They're going to earn more points on that checkers you save card. We're going to be putting promotions together. Buy this, buy that, and uh, the third one free, whatever the case is. And then don't forget social media. Okay. The fourth element, your L, is your learning and growth. And there is how are we going to ensure that we keep learning, that we keep growing within our business. So checkers can send their staff on training programs. Checkers can ensure staff wellness days to ensure that their staff is good. Because remember, your staff are at the tools, especially is the forefront of your business. And I know things are hectic at the moment, um, especially with our um, tellers being at the face of this COVID epidemic. So it would be good for checkers head office, good for checkers management to look after the staff, to say to them, you know what, we're going to have stress management courses. Ensure that every Wednesday we cook you a breakfast to say thank you for everything you do, whatever the case is. Remember also, you could also do other um, career development courses for the cashier to say, you know what, we value you, where do you see yourself in, in the future, and is there scope for you to move? Okay. So grade 12s, that is your micro. We are environmentally scanning our micro environment and how do we do it with these four tools. Have a fabulous day and I will see you soon.